and I can I can get stories. So you know, their, their, their father that's long past turned them on to when they were a young boy or young girl, and uh, and sometimes the stories are heartbreaking, and some and other times they're just humorous. But it, everyone seems to enjoy Robert's movie, of course, and, and, and mine or, or both. And uh, and my, I would always see in the early days people bringing paraphernalia for Robert, just saying like. Like old, old laser discs and old photographs from Paramount, that, you know, nobody he didn't even know about. And they come in and they have it signed. And, and, and the stories, it's just the time we spend with you know, that we get more out of it than, than they. But they, they leave with a memento of, of time spent with someone, and they're like, oh, I remember this movie for, since I was eight, and I just had to see you. And, Dry, you know, they drive in from Texas, they drive in from Canada, they drive in from Chicago. So it's a big deal to them, but it's a, even a, for a, we're, we appreciate it so much. So it's, it's a bigger deal than us. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, do we have some questions out here? Yes, maybe. Uh, my friend over there with the roving microphone can come and find you. Uh, just put your hand in. I guess I'll hand up right there. If you could tell us your name and where you're from, and then your question. Hi, my name is Badger. I'm from Peabody, Massachusetts. And I have to ask: Are you you're aware you're a meme at this point? A meme? Yeah. <laughs> Garbage day. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I guess. I, I, you know, I don't know. I, well, I, I see myself on shirts everywhere and stuff. But, uh, I think that came from me disappearing a lot. You know, I, I, I kind of, where is he, where is he, and this stupid line I did that I embellished so much being alive, and uh, but no, thank you very much. Uh, but it's nice. Hey, look, it's nice. I, when, I'm signing that more than anything else. So, you know, <laughs> it's it's the right garbage day. day. Garbage day. <laughs> and, uh, it's a, no one ever picks this. What do you want out of this? A garbage thing. Oh, okay. I just joke with them, but uh, no, it's very, it's really nice. And I know it's over the top. I know it's crazy. I know it's not. But uh, that's why it's great. I know, but <laughs> I, 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 I warmed up to it. But thank you very much. I think as a as a horror culture, we appreciate it. Over the time, so very much was a compliment. Yeah. Hello, oh, my name is Ian Moran from Birchport, Connecticut. Um, this question is for both of you. Um, like you were talking about coming late to the party for Ice and Kills, I, well, I'll start with this. Of course, as a horror fan, I, oh, I did see Silent Night, Daily Night way, way back. And um, it's always one of those movies, if you're a horror fan, that's one of the ones. It's like classic. It's, you know, and especially when all the holiday movies were coming out, you know, My Bloody Valentine. And it was just in that realm of, but truth be told, I haven't, uh, you know, kept up with your careers individually. So are, is there anything else? I think you just said you just retired from um, acting or whatever. So what are the other notable work you've done since then that you would say is, you know, maybe I would be familiar with? <laughs> Wow, with regards to Hollywood? Yes. <laughs> oh, goodness, yeah. Um, okay, so, yeah, I've done a couple things, but it, it was really so, I was in a profession that required a lot of my time. You know, it wasn't only 40 hours a week, it was, it was more than that. So I didn't really have time. I, I live where they still do films and whatnot. I live in Burbank, California, okay, so that's Hollywood over the hill. Um, and I've been there for years. Um, so once they showed this 30 year anniversary, which is about nine years ago now, and Marty? Yes. Yeah. Um, once they showed the 30 year anniversary, um, which I was invited to at the Egyptian Theater in Hollywood, and I sat amongst the crowd, and um, it, the film blew me away. And what Ryan talked about earlier was, was the humor in the film, which as an actor, you don't play the movie, you play it straight. And so I played the film straight, and I thought it was supposed to be this big serious piece. And, uh, anyway, when I went to the 30-year anniversary, I saw the humor in the film. I 
saw how the fans enjoyed it. I saw how the fans knew what was coming up and, and anticipated it with humor. So I had this whole new appreciation for it. Well, at that time, that Maria gentleman was there, he was a director of Hollywood, he does a lot of stuff. And he asked if I would ever be interested in doing something again. Um, so about mm, five years ago, I did a thing for Lifetime Network. It was called Wrong Roommate, and I had a scene with Eric Roberts. And um, so that was my first time back in front of a camera in some 27 years. Wow. So it was, um, it was great, it was nerve wracking and all of that. Um, and then since then, um, I have uh, a piece that's coming out um, next Thursday on Lifetime Movie Network. I did a part of an epi episodic, it's a three part episodic called As Luck Would Have It. And um, it's on Life Lifetime Movie Network um, with Jack K and Tom Arnold plays a role in it. I have a few scenes. But Tom so, Arnold was here last year. Oh, um, so yeah, he's, he's a cool dude. He's a cool dude. He's uh, a wild man, um, <laughs> as you can imagine. And um, and so I'm just kind of getting my toes back in the water, so to speak. And um, I've got another thing <coughs> I'm going to be doing real soon here, another lifetime project. So okay. I'm really excited to get back to it. And like I said earlier, I, I really would love to come back and play the killer sound. Nice. We'd love to see you. I did most of my work back then. Nothing in the horror, just that is horror goes. So it's a lot of television. I I came into it a little differently in the regard of how you don't do it, and how you don't do it is you don't do extra work. And uh, but for me, I thought it was very educational because I would be on a lot of television shows that. Perhaps some of you know and some don't, but uh, moonlighting and cagney and lacing and can, as an extra. I'm not getting paid much at all. Sometimes 35 bucks a day <laughs> is ridiculous, but when you're on the set, you can learn. If you watch, you can sit in a green room like most of the background, you know, twiddle your thumbs, watch TV, or just be bored to death. But I would be out on the set. But because I always thought that was you know, watch them. You know, usually they, well, in the way they shot that thing, you know, Panaflex camera, and, and learn, learn, learn. But, uh, you know, I started there, and, and the hardest thing for me was getting into set and, and after. There were separate unions then, and they were very different. It was closed off, there was too many actors, and, and the board members made sure that you couldn't get in. And so, that, that it took like, it took a number of years to get into SAG. And then you could, or, or if you get into after, you could buy into SAG after a year, but the bottom line was it was very expensive to get in, and it was a closed little community. And so, to get to that level, which when you were a serious actor, you, you would just be relegated to non-union work or limited to So, I did a number of things in television. Well, a ton of stuff. I, I, I think the 60 things, but all relatively small. And some things that made a lot of, I made a lot of money in Living Color. I did it two or three times and then, and then worked for David Dakota, which we both have, and, and um, which came from Saturday Night Billy Night. David saw me in the movie and hired me side and scene and uh, a couple times, two or three times. But no, I, my, most of my work was then, and uh, I kind of just faded. I, I just I had a got a life outside of it, but it was a tough grind. It just it came to be with my little life that I was fighting against a tide. I was in a world where I would audition as a backup for it. Usually, how it worked was if there were established stars on television, they would get they would get hired by that same network to be do a one-liner or a small part on like Friends. Or, for example, you might remember Tom Selleck was on Friends. Mm -hmm. And that was an example of me auditioning for something as a backup for a boyfriend or a main character on television, but knowing I'm not going to get it. Because why wouldn't you pick a guy like beautiful Tom Selleck that's got a high TV cue, you know, it's like, that means he's just very popular and everyone loves him. 
why would you hire him for a one-liner or two-liner or a possible referring role? So I would always be the backup to him. So it, it was a need game at that point. For me, you know, and hard to break through, I would just be okay in case Tom decides he doesn't want to do it that morning, which happens, then I'm going to be called the back or something. But in that, so my career was a little bit different in the sense that I, I had a lot of headwinds. I, it wasn't that I was discouraged. I, I kept saying, you know, this is it, this is it. Um, I'm not stopping. Now, I saw that all of them were falling on the wayside, you know, giving up, and at, trying to get me to give up. You know, like, uh, you know, you can see these guys dragging on for years, same guys auditioning to me. But um, I just got, I, I got ill and I had to kind of set myself out. So my, my little world, a little different. He's back in it. I'm not. Well, and like you said earlier about, you know, you hit a genre and you what a stroke of luck that they brought you back for that lead role because to be in a horror film and to have the community have like other panelists have said, there's no drama con, there's no rom con con, and you're gonna live on just for the work you this great work you've done and it's awesome. So thank you for sharing your stories. Appreciate it. Yo, uh, my name is Josiah I'm from Denver, Colorado. Uh, this one's for Robert. Um, other than Eric's movie, do you have a favorite uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night sequel? No. Uh, fair enough. Fair enough. Not even Bill's. Bill Mosley. I think that's number four. Did you say your name, Jose? Ah, uh, Josiah. Josiah. I'm sorry. Um, Josiah. <laughs> After I made this film, I had little children, and I didn't watch horror. Man. I didn't do it. That's what I This is something I did, and then I kind of put, like I said, put it in rear view. And I wish, I mean, because you guys are so educated, I feel so stupid like nine tenths of the time. I really don't know shit about horror. <laughs> well, appreciate the honesty, man. Thank, Thank you. you <laughs> I think there was another question here by everybody. Thank you. Um, hi, my name is Reagan. I'm from an island, and I would like to ask you, um, since doing this movie, how have you felt about Santas in shopping malls? <laughs> Santas are like clowns. They're just scary. <laughs> you know, they're, well, it's, the guy playing Santa, at the shopping mall or the clown, you know, they're, well, they're damaged, you know, in a way. <laughs> we're not disparaging the real Santa, we're talking about the, the fake Santas, the malls. Well, I, I, the malls, yes, they're still damaged. I mean, you know, I, I think they're hired, but, you know, I don't know, I just, I kind of veer away. I, I always thought that the kids that get on, get on Santa's lap and all that, that's some scary stuff. <laughs> That's my yeah, look. Yeah. It used to be an innocent time on that. I understand 50s and 60s and Macy's or Gimbal's or whatever. But you know, uh, it's suspect now. <laughs> I, uh, so, I, you know, my not a fan. Yeah. Easter Bunny also terrifying. Yeah. Wow. I mean, that's like a straight up home invasion. Like. So Ryan just brought something up, and, and because he brought it up, if you don't mind, I have to share this. Please. Okay, so, okay, Santa Claus in the malls, yeah, yeah. Maybe I ruined it for everybody, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, that's it, I'm sorry. Um, um, so, before all of this Hollywood stuff, right? Um, I lived in a town where we had this indoor mall, and I was looking for a summer job in between um, in high school. And so I, I was always looking for little quick jobs to make a few bucks. Well, it came, uh, I, I got this job with this company that would dress you up, and I dressed up as a Santa, believe it or not, as like an 18-year-old. 
crazy. I don't know if they knew something I didn't. They hired me back to come out and play the Easter Bunny. Okay? So I'm the Easter Bunny in the mall, right? With this big old Easter Bunny head taking pictures with all the kids for Easter, right? So we've got all these mamas in line with their babies coming to see the Easter Bunny. Um, so it was time for the Easter Bunny to take a break, right? So like we have these stages here, there were stairs just as the stairs are here. And I had this huge head and I couldn't see anything. <laughs> and so all these kids are still in line, right? And I was walking down the stairs with these big old floppy feet and I slipped on the top stair and landed right on my ass. And when I landed, the bunny head came on. God. You should, I mean, I only got a quick glimpse of like a few eyeballs, but it just blew some kids' minds right there. I had, so thanks for bringing up the bunny. I'm sorry, I had to share that with you. Thank you. Thank you. Do one more question. Uh, hello, I'm Robert. I was wondering, would both of you be willing to come back in like a requel to the second movie where both of you play your characters again, or do you feel like you would play you would like steal each other's thunder? I would welcome it. No, no, no thunder here. He can have it all, but uh, to be to do that together would be would be a lot of fun, and I'm sure you guys would enjoy it as well. Yeah. yeah. No, no, I agree. I, 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 you know, I think it would have to be written in a way, written well. Any, anything, you come back on anything, it better be just dynamite. So, you know, otherwise, it would just leave a you know, sour taste in your mouth. So, uh, that, that's a good question. But yeah, I, I, it doesn't necessarily have to be that, but it would be nice to have put it. I think David Dakota tried to put us together for a short little thing. Um, something for Christmas? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, husband, 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 husband for Christmas. Yeah. So, um, but it was it, it was all thought out very well, but it, it should it should have been more. In, in a way, Robert had some good lines in that. I think I got, again, some audio issue and dump me over and by the time I, I have this track record with David of, 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 of the sound being bad and dubbing my voice and so uh, last three outings with David uh, someone else threw my lines in for me so but uh, no it would be interesting to have us both do yeah. something that'd be great uh, well everybody thank you so much Eric Robert thank you so much <laughs> Come, meet you, chit chat, ask questions. Oh yeah, please so, stop by and say hi now that we've met. <laughs> please. Fantastic. Thanks guys. Thank you.